At this point, I don't even know what to say. NVIDIA is completely falling apart here. There's another issue with their GPUs, and pretty much every NVIDIA owner needs to be aware of it. But before I get to that, this new GPU is a joke, but AMD could save the day, and they're about to release their most powerful next-gen GPU yet. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. This video is sponsored by Pork Bun. So I've been talking about 8GB GPUs being dead for over a year now. Fortunately, Nvidia hasn't listened and they keep releasing crap like the 5060 Ti. And of course, they tried to hide it by only sending out 16GB models to reviewers, but some now have the card, with Hardware Unboxed recently doing a review. And yeah. It's terrible. So I thought I'd go over some of this and show you just how bad it can be. So starting things off, we have The Last of Us Part 2, and yes, it is 4K, but it's with DLSS. And here you can see that the frame rate is it's getting right around half of what the 16 gigabyte model does. But don't worry, because it actually gets even worse, because you can see right here The Last of Us Part 2 still, but yes, it's native, but it's 1080p. And here, let me actually go back, you can see that it dips massively in terms of FPS. At this point, the average FPS is still right around half of the 16 gigabyte model, but then there are times where the frame rate dips to 20, even 10 FPS. Oh boy. Moving on, we have some other things. This is actually something that I shared a little while back in my video about eight gigabytes. You can see here, oh, that was a crash right there in Indiana Jones, but then in Hogwarts Legacy at 1440p, you can see right now it's looking pretty decent. Right over here, it starts going down, oh, all the way down to 10 and below FPS with the eight gigabyte card, while we're looking at 51 FPS with 16 gigabytes. Then we have over here, Horizon Forbidden West, Yes, 4K very high, but DLSS performance mode. And here we're looking at 11, 12 FPS versus 70, 71, 72 FPS. All in all, this GPU is a joke. The pricing is a joke. It's all a joke. Now, before I get to the next one, check this out. So I found out that I've been losing a bunch of money every time I buy a new domain. So let's think of something here. Let's think gamer meld rules, sure. Check that out. Let's look at the .com right here. Okay, it says 1044 for the first year, but then it renews at 1106. But let's take another really popular one, Gamer Meld Rules. Just something I came up with. Oh, it's just one penny. Okay, well, let's add it. Let's see. Okay, we don't want three years, so let's do one year here. And... Yeah, okay, $11.99, not that bad, except if you see here, it renews at $21.99, meaning every single year, when compared to pork bun, you're paying double the price. So let's just say I've lost a bunch of money over the years. Not only that, but they offer other services cheaper as well, like their email hosting for just two bucks a month, while other registrars are closer to $8. Basically, if I would have discovered them sooner, I could have saved hundreds of dollars, maybe even more. And today, when you visit my link in the description, you'll get a dollar off your next domain name. So check that out today. And next up for today, while the 5060 Ti is a joke, AMD may actually save us with their next GPU. So according to the most recent rumors from the Board Channels Forum, which as they state is a forum associated with various board partners, we're either looking at a release of the 9060 XT around mid-May or the announcement of it around mid-May with the actual release in June. Either way, it is definitely coming soon. And unfortunately, I will say that also according to this, the 9070 GRE has, which apparently was originally planned to launch on May 8th, 
has been postponed, and according to this, we could actually be seeing a release as late as the fourth quarter. And of course, while that is a disappointment, AMD still may save us with their 9060 XT. Because if you remember not too long ago, some rumors claimed that the 9060 XT would get performance above the RTX 4060 Ti, which is of course fairly close to the 5060 Ti. It will likely trade neck and neck or something like that. I mean, we don't really know for sure here, but it's at least over the 4060 Ti. And while yes, they also offer, according to this, an eight gigabyte SKU, the good news is the fact that they are seriously set to crush NVIDIA when it comes to pricing. Because as you can see, the crappy 8GB model starts out at $379, while the 16GB model on the high end of the pricing that was leaked here, we're looking at that same price, with it potentially being even lower. Meaning you might be able to get the 16 gigabyte model, if this is right, for even less than the 8 gigabyte 5060 Ti. Of course, like I said, it is still a disappointment that they even have an 8 gigabyte SKU, but with this pricing, it really doesn't matter. And speaking of GPU memory, if you remember not too long ago, there were rumors about a 9070 XT with 32 gigabytes of VRAM. Now, we then heard that it wasn't coming, but it's exactly as I thought, because AMD is still releasing their most powerful next-gen GPU, it's just gonna be a Pro card. As you can see right here, this one comes from the very well-known leaker who's definitely gotten a ton of stuff right in the past. And according to him, this GPU is built on the 48 XTW. And like I said, it is a pro card. And obviously, given the fact that we're looking at a 48 with the GPU, it likely is very similar to the 9070 XT, except it comes with 32 gigabytes of VRAM. And as you can see here, this is likely the W9000 series based on RDNA 4, of course. So once again, we are unfortunately looking at a pro series of GPUs. And that, of course, means that 32 gigabytes is likely ECC GDDR6, which means it's definitely set to be a very expensive GPU. So I'm not at all saying that you need to run out and buy this or anything like that, but it will definitely be interesting to see. Oh, and when it comes to the release date, Video Cards asked if this is part of advancing AI event, but said he's not sure, but maybe sooner in Taiwan. And that of course means Computex. And lastly for today, NVIDIA has done it yet again. This story originally comes from the German site Igor's Lab, where you can see that it states that he uncovered a hotspot issue affecting all RTX 50 series GPUs. Great. As you can see right down here, so let's kind of just get right into it. According to Igor's lab, the problem lies in the construction of power delivery systems for the affected graphics cards. Igor's lab stated that several components that make up the power delivery system, such as FETs, coils, drivers, and traces connecting everything together, are grouped too close together, creating temperatures that can potentially deteriorate the power delivery system over the course of the card's life, maybe even killing the card after just a few years of use. So now we have some examples. The PCB, for instance, is made up of several thin copper layers that are connected with power planes. This causes high thermal density on the board, especially around the voltage converters. Power delivery components responsible for feeding a GPU supply rails are often placed too close to each other on the PCB in an effort to keep the design as compact as possible. Obviously, that leads to issues. Not only that, but another issue is actual flaws that he pointed out in NVIDIA's thermal design guide. Now, he specifically looks at the thermal design guide for the RTX 4090, and the reason for that is to protect manufacturing processes and things like that of current gen GPUs. He didn't really think that it was a good thing to actually release that information on these new cards just because he could kind of see it with the 40 series GPUs, but Regardless, essentially what all he found is the fact that, as you can see here, it says the document parameters are specified for being under ideal environmental conditions 
rather than looking at the worst case scenario. And of course, if you've ever engineered anything, if you know much about engineering, you know that a lot of times you really want to look at the absolute worst case possibility that someone could use whatever you're making, you know, what kind of environment, how they could use it. You have to look at all of that stuff, which is really one reason why I think the 12E 2x6 connector is horribly designed. You know, a lot of people say, oh, well, if you just pushed it in hard enough, which we've sort of found out since then, that may not necessarily be the only issue. But if it's so hard to push in or if it comes out over time, that's obviously an issue. Still, this is another problem that he noticed with these cards. And he actually put a couple under some testing conditions. You can see right here, he put a PNY 5070. So yes, this is not just affecting the higher end GPUs, but even the lower end ones. So a PNY 5070 and Palette 5080 Gaming Pro OC under a thermal camera to demonstrate these thermal issues. And as you can see, it says the 5080 Gaming Pro OC was shown to have a hotspot area between the rear display output and the GPU die, measuring 80.5 degrees Celsius, while the GPU cores were sitting at 70 degrees Celsius. But get this, the 5070 was much worse. That one was actually measuring around 107.3 degrees Celsius in the same area due to its significantly shorter PCB. And yet the GPU core was much colder at 69.7 degrees Celsius. Some of this he claims is from not using uh, adequate components to build the GPU. You can actually see right here, it says board partners could rectify this issue by using heavier duty materials, which is commonplace in server and industrial GPUs. But of course, the problem there is that these GPUs are meant to be quite a bit cheaper. But according to this, he actually applied a thermal mod to both the GPUs. And because of that, it got a massive reduction in temps. So the 5080's power delivery hotspot moved from 80.5 to 70.3. Then the 107.3 dropped well below 95 degrees. Still, though, that isn't really good enough because at least according to this 80 degrees is close to the limit at which long-term electro migration and aging effects can occur and this of course would mean that it would eventually cause the gpu to die over years of use basically like i said i don't even know what to say just nvidia you messed up